time to give old girl a little car wash. But before I do that. Oh, that was nice. That was really, really nice. What is good, fellow grease monkeys? Figured I'd take a quick stop, get myself a car wash, because I haven't done that since it snowed. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Sabrina's looking a little unloved, kind of dirty, so. I think it's high time we show her that she is appreciated. All right, it looks a lot cleaner now. But the point of this video was not to come here and just get a car wash. I actually wanted to share a couple of points with you guys because I know, much like me, there are some of you guys out there that don't know everything about these cars and you like them and you want to get into it but you're too scared because you don't want to make a huge financial mistake and I completely understand. So today I'm going to give you everything you need to know about buying a WRX or STI. Uh, some of the things are things that I personally think you should look out for. Um, there's a ton of these videos out on YouTube so you can probably find other videos that have done a better job or have done different things. With that being said, it's time for us to head out, find a good spot before the sun sets, and uh, we'll be on our way. Yo, yo, you got an ID? Oh yeah, of course. It's uh, literally, it's just, I think, Jacob RJB. Okay, I got you. spot so let us begin another one of the big things that I wish I knew about and I should have known about considering I live in New England was the amount of rust and rot and like oxidation that comes with buying one of these this isn't Subaru specific but more more towards uh, cars in like sandy areas salty areas like Northeast down south on most older GD model Subarus, so like uh, 02 to like 07, so GD, GG, that GG stands for wagon, you're gonna get a lot of rust on the quarter panels, a lot of rust on the rocker panels, same with the front fenders, but with the wagons, a lot of times you'll see the coilover kind of just shoot through the strut tower and, you know, end up touching your roof. But that's just something that you want to look out for with these cars because it does happen a lot. I've seen it, and it's not pleasant to try to deal with. You can fix it, it's patchable, but it's a lot of work and if you can avoid it by just taking a quick second and looking at it before you buy it that'll save you a lot of headache modifications is also something you're gonna want to be on the lookout for having a couple light modifications never hurt anyone like you know intake downpipe cap back things of that nature those don't really hurt the car's performance and they're fine but when you're buying a used car especially especially used WRXs and STIs buying someone else's project nine times out of ten will normally bite you back in the ass 
So when I bought this car, it had about 172,000 miles, I think, on it, and it only had coolant expansion tank, and then I think uh, upgraded brakes in the front, and then the cat bag, and that was literally it. Everything else that's on the car, I've done myself, or me and my buddies have done together. If I saw my exact same car being sold somewhere else, with all of the issues it has and all the parts it has on there, I would probably stay away from it because it's somebody else's problem. And that's not to say that buying someone's project is always going to hurt you. Some, there are some cases where somebody sells something just because they don't have the time to keep, keep fixing it, they don't have the time to take care of it, but it's all done up and pretty much ready to go. And at that point you get to enjoy a nice new build, you just don't get the fun of actually building it yourself. I always recommend if you're going to buy a WRX that you want to build or an STI that you want to build, try to find one as close to stock as possible, which most of the time for GDs especially doesn't happen, but if you can find one that'd be awesome, or one with light bolt-ons is okay too, like catback. Uh, you know, air intake, th things of that nature. When you start getting into fuel, when you start getting into downpipes, bigger turbos and whatnot, you have no idea what you're stepping into and it's always nine times out of 10 safer to just stay away from it. For the 2008 up to like 2011, 12, 13 range, those ones are a lot less sought after just because they didn't have the wide body that everyone looks for in these cars. It might be a lot better to start building just because they're newer. They're normally unmolested because people kind of just bought them and then dumped them right after. So those are pretty good finds as well. If you get a narrow body, you can just go ahead and throw wide body fenders on and you will have yourself that WRX one that you're looking for. For those of you guys who are crazy Subi enthusiasts, you're eager to start working on your car and you're really excited to just get your hands in there, just do a little bit of research before you get onto the car because you will find out that, you know, doing certain things like changing spark plugs or coil packs or whatever the case may be will not be as easy as doing it on any other car. So as you guys know we do have the flat floor motor so it's the boxer four and so because our pistons are you know side to side horizontal they're going pretty much towards the firewall either way and it makes it a little bit difficult to do a lot of jobs like uh, spark plugs, coil packs, just to even get to them on this side I got to remove the washer fluid, remove the uh, battery which in the grand scheme of things really isn't a lot. It's not that much of a hassle now at this point that I've done it so many times. But as a first time enthusiast, you know, hopping into this car, it was a little bit overwhelming when I, you know, when I, when I first tried to tackle it. Um, after doing it a few times though, you'll realize that it's not that difficult. And once you get the hang of how to do certain things and learn the finger moves, you're, you're pretty much gonna be golden. So yeah, pretty much before you buy a WRX, before you buy an STI, just look out for rust. Look out for the mileage, check the service history, um, just do some research, make sure that the workspace is something that you think you can even handle. Most guys are used to like Chevys and like big things where everything's on top or whatever the case may be. And they hop in a Subaru and then the first thing they see is, oh God, my spark plugs are on my sidewall. What do I do about that? Like I said, I didn't have a lot to touch on. I just wanted to make a quick video for you guys. I've missed you. It's been about like 10 or 12 days since the last one. So I'm trying to get on more of a consistent basis, whether it's one week, two weeks, whatever. I'm just gonna try to get more videos out for you guys. I've got a few more ideas for things that don't involve installs, just kind of more more vloggy or informative. It's been a while since I've been myself behind the camera and I kind of just picked it up and just did, did, did recording. Uh, I've been relying lately on people to get content. I've been relying on parts to get content and I forgot who I was and what I'm about. And I make videos out of nothing. I make a good time out of nothing. And so that's what I'm doing today. And I hope you guys appreciated the, uh, the quick little, little buyer's guide for a WRX STI. And um, I will see you in the next video. And say bye to the baby. Ooh, that actually will be a pretty good thumbnail right there. Peace out, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. I'll try to get it out for you guys maybe two or three days from now. Let's see if we can get maybe on like a, a two to three day schedule for videos, at least for the next two weeks. If not, then maybe a, a, a one week of video or one video a week or something like that. So I'm going to try to get something out for you guys. But peace out. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video.